about Mark as a as a leader. And here now, okay? I just wanted to say just a little bit about Mark as a leader. And contemporary America, we have some strange notions of what leadership means. Mark is not that kind of a leader. And when I think about Mark's leadership style, I think that peace and positivity radiate from Mark. I got to tell you, I ripped that phrase off. The, that phrase was used by the Chancellor of UC San Diego a few days ago to introduce the Dalai Lama at their commencement. <laughs> but when I read it, I thought, that's Mark. And just like the world is so lucky to have the Dalai Lama, the world is lucky to have Mark Van Horn. And we've been particularly lucky. 40 years of the student farm, which is forever young. That's my other phrase about the student. Forever young because we have these students coming through. But 30 years and counting, because Mark, you're not leaving town, right? 30 years of service from Mark Van Horn to this mission. And I was thinking about it. So work with me here. I'm going to make a request, a couple of requests of you. So everybody who's a current student farmer, please stand up. Okay. Anybody who's a SAFS major but is not yet a current student farmer, anybody who's a SAFS major who's not yet standing, sustainable agriculture and food systems, please stand up. Now, SAFS alumni, please stand up. Okay. Now, all the student farm alumni, please stand up. So, so now look, look around, look around, because we're all going to be partying together, and I want you all to get to know each other, because this is a very powerful network. Yeah, you can sit down now. <laughs> but the other thing is that if you take the people that were standing, they're the ones who could come that we were aware of. But multiply that by, so by somewhere between 10 and 100, and you start getting an impression of the kind of impact that Mark has had. And it's, it's such a privilege to work with Mark, and I'm, I'm so grateful for everything that he's done to make this farm the gem that it is. I don't know if Helene realizes this. I think she does. The role of the student farm in a modern research university is really to provide a safe space for students to do what they want to do and crazy stuff that's going to be mainstream 10 or 20 years out in the future. It's the place for fringe experiments. And Mark and the whole team here creates a place in which that can happen. Um, and Charlie, who's going to be talking next, is the person who made that all happen. So, Carol, over to you, and thank you all very much for being here. Okay. Charlie, I'm going to bring you the mic in just a second. Okay. Charlie Hess, as has been said, is was the dean at the time that the student farm was started. And I have to introduce um, also, he's, he's actually not here, but Danny Cohen was the student that worked with a, number, a whole group of students. He was maybe perhaps the ringleader of that group that, that came to Charlie and um, presented this big and bright idea, this image of a student farm. But one thing, Danny couldn't be here tonight because there was a death in his family. He, he did want to be here to speak to you folks. But one thing he asked me to say was that um, what he thought was special about the time was that he was able to work with this group of students, he was one of them, but they had to mold their big and bright idea into something that could work for the college. And then that in combination with a receptive leader and um, thoughtful, careful, receptive leader, Charlie Hess, was what allowed this to happen. So I'm going to take the mic to Charlie now and we'll hear a few words from him. Thank you very much, Carol. And Helene, thank you very much for your kind uh, comments and also Tom. Um, it really is a true honor to be given a few minutes to share with you uh, the origin of the student form and uh, the role of the founding director, Mark Van Horn. As has been said, in 1977, a group of enthusiastic students uh, led by Danny Cohen, uh, to whom you also don't say no, 
<laughs> um, came to the dean's office with the proposal to establish a student forum. Uh, Jim Lyons and Cal Quasset, who was here, and other associate deans supported the concept, as did I. And we are we allocated some funds and a staff position, and a student forum was up and running. Now. Not everyone liked the idea because it had the potential, uh, according to a phone call that I received from an administrator uh, above the dean's office, that this could become a campus eyesore with rabbits and goats running freely around and eating up the arboretum. <laughs> and so it was few people uh, were able to have the vision that this would become a campus feature and be ranked in 2015 as the best of the best college student forms. Now this impressive accomplishment was possible because Mark Van Horn was open the new ideas and to from students and faculty and from the private sector community leaders and could select the best projects for implementation. And an, ex an excellent example I think is the recent uh, integration of the uh, student farm and the Agricultural Sustainability Institute led by founding director Tom Thomas. Now, here what we have are the students are provided exposure to the concepts of uh, the student farm and organic farming and so forth, but now they have a course uh, and a program in which they can lead to a career in this field. And I think it's a very important contribution that this university is making in its continued service over the past hundred years or so to the benefit of agricultural production in California. We owe such a lot to the leadership and kind personality, ingenuity, uh, energy, and perseverance that Mark Van Horn, the student director of 30 years, which in itself is a, a marvelous record in sustainability. <laughs> <laughs> we all thank you, Mark, for the tremendous contributions and wish you the best in your retirement or second career, whichever that may be. Dear friend Mark, we will miss you tremendously. It's uh, a pleasure to be here to honor all the contributions that you have made for the benefit of students, faculty, the university. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and next, I am so happy. Uh, the, the student farm manager that preceded Mark, Drew Rivers, is here to say a few words to us. And, um, it's so exciting. She is one of the farmer owners of Full Belly Farm. And that, if you haven't been out there, is another is another gem in Yolo County, um, a beautiful farm up in the Cape Valley. So Drew, come on up. Thank you so much for this. Gosh, it's just such... Um, it is, Charlie, an amazing testament to sustainability that this farm is still here. Makes me want to cry. It's just amazing. <laughs> so, um, I don't want to get too political or anything, um, but um, I remember my first couple days as the student farm manager here. Um, the head of, of Ag Services came over I had a tractor problem and he 
looked at me and said, what's a pretty thing like you doing out here on a tractor? <laughs> so I just, I feel like we've come a long, long way. <laughs> I, I know that on our farm now, we get 500 applicants to come and work uh, and be interns at our farm and probably 400 of them are women. So uh, I feel like um, that really, there, it started here is so much of what I remember in my life as a farmer now for the last 34 years. Um, really, m my life started here. And in learning so much just about field work, but about politics, how you navigate um, that delicate thread. And what I really, when I thought of what I'd like to say, I wanted to say somehow the word intuition kept coming to my brain. It wasn't even vision at that point. It was intuition that there was something we needed to be saying to the university. There was something that we really needed to be bringing out a different angle, a different view. And we did that, you guys. We really did it. And um, I feel like so much has snowballed from this little spot under these trees were here when I, when I was the farm manager 40 years ago. And they're still here. And thank you, Charlie, for making that happen. It's amazing. Um, but I feel like our intuition really has grown into an incredible thing that everyone now recognizes was good and right. I don't want to be self-righteous, but I honestly think we were kind of right. Uh, <laughs> that, you know, there was a place here. We needed this place so desperately to do this organic research, to think about sustainability, and look how it's grown. It's really remarkable. So that was a thing of intuition. Mark actually then took that intuition and implemented it. And so I just really feel like we owe so much of what is still here, how strong this thread is for all of us here, um, that Mark really made it happen. We sort of tried to make it happen, um, but it, and he really did it. I have so many memories of Eric and Lisa milking cows or milking goats at the end of the road here. Um, so many memories of, of some of your faces being so familiar. Um, Thank you so much for being here tonight to recognize the importance that this piece of soil holds for all of us. It really holds us and binds us as farmers all over the world. This college is recognized now for its vision and sustainability, and we need to keep pushing that envelope forever. And I just want to say thank you so much to Mark for pushing it and pushing it and hanging in there with it for us all these years. Um, have a wonderful night. And Mark, these are for you. I brought 40 black-eyed Susans for the 40th anniversary. And uh, I just want to give them to you. Lovely. Okay, thank you, Drew. So next we are going to hear from some of the students that have been here. Um, we're going to hear from an, a, almost a just current student, Lexi Fuji, a recent student, Jeff Germain, and a past student, Bapu Vaitla. Come on up. Hello, everybody. <laughs> That's Chef Germain, and I'm Lexi Fuji. 
Um, thank you for everyone who spoke before us. I was definitely tearing up a little, and I'll try not to right now. Um, Mark. Wow, I have never cried in front of this many people. <laughs> okay, start over. Mark, to some you are a teacher, a boss, a family member. To many you are a mentor, and to all you are a friend. We can always count on you for advice, a laugh, your toothy grin, and great stories. Over the past 30 years, you have created something so special and so unique here. And I know your humble self would never admit or never credit yourself alone for what you've done at the student farm. You would say it was the students or it's everyone, but you have been the one constant that's been here. Hundreds of students look up to you and your achievements. They feel inspired by your passion and kindness and know a part of their heart will always belong in this special place. You have helped create a community that spans across the entire country and even the entire globe. And when we said we were moving to New York, you already had like five contacts for us in New York that were all old student farmers. As new students, our teachers tend to blend together. In our minds, we distinguish our classes between subject matter and class size and difficulty. But for all they do for us, our teachers tend to remain just that, teachers. They stand up there and we sit back here. We raise our hands and they call our names. But beyond that and the occasional office hours visit, we students never really get to know our teachers as real people. We don't get to see the side of them that brings them back down to reality in our minds and makes us go, oh, these people are people just like me. They are actually really cool and wow, they can be a lot of fun. <laughs> well, Mark Van Horn is quintessentially one of those people. He's the guy that most of us leaving here are gonna say, man, I sure am glad I got to know Mark. It's a special feeling knowing that. There are but a handful of teachers throughout our educational careers that will stand out in our minds and memories when it is all said and done. And when we leave and move on to the real world as many of us are now, we're taking with us only the most vital lessons. Mark's the kind of guy that shows up to every student farm and staffs gathering, no matter how big or small. He's the one that cracks up the room and brings everyone together. I have seen the student farm and the staff's major change people's perceptions and lives. And to you, Mark, we are grateful. Your hard work, drive to better this world, and passion in agriculture has changed all of our lives. We will miss your presence here, but we know you will not stop being an incredible mentor and incredible friend. And all we can really say now is thank, thank you, you and we and love, we love you. you. You've been a father to me. And I, I can't thank you enough for that. I'm going to try to do this without breaking down. <laughs> so might, there might be some pauses while I compose myself. Uh, and, and the older I get, uh, even without having kids of my own, I realize uh, how hard it is to be a good father, a good husband, uh, a good friend, good teacher. Uh, it's hard. And it, it, it's hard because um, it turns out that getting older and growing up, it, it's not about really uh, arriving at a place where you feel complete. Uh, it, it, you never get to a point where, where you're perfectly competent at, at understanding or, or patience uh, or empathy. Uh, it turns out that it's more about learning to live with the questions, uh, and sometimes very troubling questions, um, and learning to live with the fact that, that oneself, you're imperfect, other people are imperfect, the world just broadly is imperfect, um, and, and trying to live with all of that with some kind of grace. And, uh, you know, for me, that's, that's who you are. That's, that's what you are to me. You're, you're, you're a man who uh, 
in the middle of all the noise of this world, the, the political madness and the environmental distress and, and one's own fears and anxieties, you're, you're a man who, uh, who listens with himself, all of himself, when somebody needs. Um, you're a man who, who searches for answers tirelessly. You're a man who thinks and feels as deeply as he possibly can. You're a man that lives with grace. And uh, myself, uh, that's all I want to be. That's, that's the kind of man I want to be. That's the kind of teacher I want to be. And, and maybe someday that's, that's the kind of father uh, that I'd like to be. It's, you are all of what I would aspire to be. And, you know, when I think about, from the outside, what, what the meaning of your life is, just from another person's perspective, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's love and good work, good work and love, love and good work, you know? And uh, it, it's, it's, it's manifest in, in everything that's around you. It's manifest in a, in a marriage that continually inspires me. And, uh, you know, it's manifest in your two brilliant, compassionate daughters. Where are they? Where are they now? Stand up, Nina, Nina, Julia. It's manifest in this farm that, that you've built, that um, has nurtured and saved the minds of so many, you know, who knows how many uh, students who've gone out and, and, and spread love in their own way and done good work of their own. Um, and, and, you know, I think about all of that together. It's manifest in this, in this group of friends here who all, in their own ways, fight the good fight and have a good time doing it, you know? Uh, but I think about all that together, and, and I cannot think of, of uh, a better way to live a life. The life that you've lived, you continue to live, will live, I can't think of a better life. I mean, you know? So, so I'm, I'm almost done. I'm almost done with what I have to say. But, but before I go... Before I go, before I go, uh, let's just talk for a second about retirement. Because I don't, retirement, I mean, shit. I mean, like, it's, so, you know, I hate to be the one to break it to you in this way, you know, but uh, ain't no retirement for you, man. I, uh, I, I mean, you're not going to get any paychecks no more, you know, there's that. We can have this party again next year if you want. We can do that. But with people like you, there's no retirement for you, you know? When you're the kind of person who, who uh, can't turn away, when, when people come to, come to him with questions or their confusion or their despair, uh, like you never turned away from me in all these years, uh, when you're the kind of person who, who sees all the nonsense in this world for what it is and at the same time sees the beauty of what could be and the alternatives, uh, when you're the kind of person who has... The, the quickness and precision of mind, of intellect, to be able to design solutions and the tirelessness to implement them, there's no retirement, you know? There's no retirement. And, and you know, when you're the beloved, when you're beloved and revered and respected and trusted, there's no retirement because all of us are gonna keep coming to you, you know? <laughs> we need you, we need you. We'll, we'll keep needing you. Uh, you know, we'll need you to guide us and support us and, and uh, lead us, you know? We'll, we'll still follow you. So there ain't no retirement for you. I'm sorry to let you down. So you know all this, but, but it's gonna be good. It's gonna be good. So you know the most. That's it. That's all I'll say. But the most important thing, I'll just repeat what everyone else says: is I love you. I love you very, very much. And everyone here loves you from the bottom of their hearts. And, and we thank you for what you've built, what you've done, and for being who you are, which is it's the light in all of our lives in, in this world. So thank you. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to keep to the paper here because Lexi started the tears. Bapu, come on. Okay, so I'm at an age where things that used to sound cliche now ring true. Stitch in time saves nine. Early bird catches the worm. Keep it simple. These sayings live in my frontal lobe and direct me through my days. So, can I say now without shame of cliche that we stand in a historic place at a historic moment? Yes. 
Our history matters, and that is why we celebrate and consider our past as we move into our interesting and promising future here. Land like this, and I think Drew alluded to this, 